Hey kids, welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 3, Nested If Statements, Exercise Number 3. We have a choose your own adventure. Kids, the answers for A and B are very similar, and C and D are very similar. A and B are going to be handled in another video. I'm going to do D for this one. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the code. The SAT scene class creates a visualization of the number of SAT scores in the following ranges. Top score, competitive scores, above average scores, and below average scores. The SAT scene class has instance variables for each range. The analyze data method counts the number of scores in the SAT scores array to fall within each range. The create scenes method draws circles using these counts to represent the number of scores in each range. In SAT scene.java, we're going to write the analyze data method by traversing the SAT scores array. If the value is less than or equal to 1600 and greater than or equal to 1340, we're going to add one to top score. If the value is less than or equal to 1320 and greater than or equal to 1200, we're going to add one to competitive. If the value is less than or equal to 1880 and greater than or equal to 1030, we're going to add one to above average. If the value is less than or equal to 1010 or greater than or equal to 400, add one to below average. Then we're going to write the create scene method by drawing different colored circles for each range. Use the instance variables top score, competitive, above average, and below average for the width and height of the circles. And our visualization should look something like this. Before we get started, let's take a look at our code. In my theater, we're creating a file reader and passing along SAT scores text. And then we're creating an array scores that has 181 pieces of data. We're creating a new scene by scene from SAT scores. We're passing along the scores that we got from SAT scores a text file. We're running the analyze data and create scenes method from the my scene object. And then the theater is going to visualize it. We have our standard file reader. Doesn't look like anything is new here. We're importing our theater. SAT scenes is extending the scene from the theater class. We're creating one array SAT scores. That's the list of SAT scores. Then we have four private instance variables, top score, competitive, above average, below average. Those are the ranges that we got from our instructions. We're creating our constructor SAT scene. It's taking the SAT scores from above and our variables, top score, competitive, above average, below average, all set to zero. And this is probably where we're going to add one if they fall within these ranges. We have some get methods, get top score, get competitive, get above average, get below average. That's our variables from above. We have our analyze data. This is the method we have to write. And the create scene method, we also have to write. SAT scores looks like a list of a whole bunch of SAT scores. I know this seems like a lot, kids, but it really isn't too bad. Let's break this down to smaller steps, and I think we can tackle it together. First, we have to write this analyze data method. And it has to go through, and we're going to do a nested if statement if the scores are within these ranges over here. But first thing we have to do is traverse through that SAT scores array. So let's do that first. Let's write our for statement. And that's going to be for, don't forget your curly cues. This is going to be the end of for statement. What do you want inside? We need an index, int, 
index equal zero as long as the index is less than what array do we want to go through well we want to go through this sat scores array here sat scores dot length and as long as we are not at the end of that array we want to keep going up one this is going to look through our array when we look through we want to say if the value is less than or equal to 1600 and if the value is greater than or equal to 1340, we want to add one to top score. It means we need a nested if statement. And that means if, and we'll do a, another parenthesis and curly Q. This is going to be our outer if. And on this one, we just want to see if the SAT score at whatever index we're at, if that is greater than or equal to 1600, not only is it less than or equal to 1600, it also has to be greater than or equal to 1340. It means we need another if statement. If, and we'll do our curly Q, this is going to be our inner if. And this time, if SAT score at index is greater than or equal to 1340, in that case, we want to add one to top scores. Give a little semicolon there. Clean up our code here. Oh, we forgot to comment that out. We have our inner, outer, and then we have our for statement here. So this statement takes care of number one. Inside our larger for, we want to do number two. Let's take care of it. Give ourselves a little space here. This time, if parentheses, curly Q, and this is going to be our outer if. Don't forget to comment it out. In here, we want to see if SAT score at whatever index we're at is less than or equal to 1320. And if, do our parenthesis curly Q, this is our inner if, if the SAT score at index is greater than or equal to 1200 well those students are competitive and we're going to add one to the competitive variable that looks like it's spelled right time will tell kids let's clean up our code two down two more to go Give ourselves a little more space. If, and this is again, our outer if, and if the SAT score at index is less than or equal to, this time it's 1180, and if, Add some curly cues. This is our inner if. If the SAT score at that index is greater than or equal to 1030. So greater than or equal to 1030. You see I have an uppercase C there. Let's click on these to make sure they're spelled right. Oh, looks like our index isn't inside there. Let's move it inside there. That looks right. Index looks, oops, looks like we got an error there. Two kids. Index should have a square bracket right there. That looks pretty good. If a student scores within this range, we're going to add one to the above average variable. Don't forget your semicolon. Clean it up. 
we have one more to do. If we need our curly Q, this is our outer if, and if SAT score at index is less than or equal to 1010, and if curly Q, this is our inner if, if SAT score at index is greater than or equal to four hundredths, we're going to give one to the below average variable. Clean that up. Should end up with four curly Qs. Looks like that's what we got there. So our nested if statement is just checking to make sure a student is within a range. If they are, we're adding one to that variable. And it just loops through each one. One thing to keep in mind about nested if statements, if you're using them, make sure the condition you are checking for at the top is the most specific. Because if you think about it, almost all kids are gonna have above a 400, not all kids are going to be between a 1600 and a 1340. We're not done yet. We have to write the create scene method still. And this isn't too bad, kids. We're just going to draw different colored circles using the variable as a parameter for the width and height. All we're going to do here is pass along the parameter from the variables above and make that R width and height for some circles. How are we gonna do that? Well, first thing, we have to tell it what color we want. So let's do set fill color. And for this one, this is gonna be our top range. Let's use green. Then we actually have to draw our ellipse. And the command was draw ellipse. Don't forget your semicolon. What was inside of it? Well, we needed an X and Y coordinate. Let's put our X and Y over here in this range. You can see 50, 50, probably be pretty good here. So let's add 50, 50, and then we need to give it a width and height. Well, this is going to be our top score. So the width is just going to be the top scores. And the height, same thing, the top scores. When I hit run, I should get a green circle right here. Well, let's see if I'm right, kids. Oh, looks like we got an error. Well, kids, I went and checked to make sure it was SAT score. It was SAT scores with an S. Make sure you double check that, kids. So let's just add an S to each of these and see if we're right. That looks pretty good. Let's clear and hit run. See if we get a green circle. And we do. That's a little hard to see. We want this to be a visualization. Let's take our numbers and multiply it times two. So we'll take whatever our width and height is times two. Let's see if that looks any better. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That's one. We have to do three more. So we're going to set fill color. This is going to be for our competitive. Let's use blue. Let's draw our ellipse. This time, we want it to be over here. Let's hit stop. That's somewhere around 300, 100 looks pretty good. So let's make our X 300, our Y 100. And this is our competitive. And we're gonna multiply this times two as well. We have to keep it consistent. 
Again, competitive times two. Well, let's test it out and hit run. We have our blue there. Let's hit stop. Finally, we have our above average. If we had our drawing, you'll remember it was somewhere over here. It was about 150, 100, I think, somewhere around there. Make our third one set of fill color. This time we're going to use orange. We're going to draw our ellipse. We wanted to use 150, 100. These are above average test takers. We are going to multiply times two still. And then for the height, the same thing above average times two. Let's take care of our final test takers, set fill color. This time, these are our below average. We're going to use red for them. I'm sorry, kids. Let's give ourselves a little room. We're going to draw our ellipse. This time, it was somewhere around, I think, 150, 200. Yeah, it was all kind of over there. So this one, let's do 150, 200. These are below average. Multiply times two and below average again times two. When I hit run, I should get my four circles. It should look something like this. Well, let's see if I'm right, kids. Oh, added a extra E here. Let's hit clear, stop and run. That's pretty close. I think our blue could have been a little further over. For the most part, we got our visualization pretty well. Key takeaway from this lesson, kids, is again, understanding this idea of nested if statements and how to use them. Remember, our most specific cases go at top. For us, that's going to be people at the top of the scoring range. Almost all students are going to have above a 400. That's what we want to test for last. We want to test for our most specific cases, the high end first. Again, why do we use nested if statements? We use it to further test criteria to get very specific answers from our code. Hopefully this video helped you understand nested if statements a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.